Good afternoon and welcome Southside ISD parents and families to our Facebook Live event. We have had um, some parents and community members ask questions about what the district safety features are and what we are doing to share information about COVID-19 and the work that's being done in the school district. So this afternoon, we have a special Facebook Live event where we are going to review the places on our Southside ISD webpage. You can find information about COVID-19 in our school district. We are also going to have a little presentation from our lead district nurse, Desiree, and she's going to explain the steps that we go through for COVID-19 and positive cases in our school district. And we're going to close today with our CTE program for automotive, and we hope that you will enjoy everything we have to present. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to share my screen with you and give you information about our COVID-19 updating page. The first thing I need to do is present. So the first thing you'll do is go to your browser and type into your browser and um, Southside ISD and you will come to our home page. As our home page comes up, the first thing that you need to look at for our COVID-19 update is the yellow bar that is up close to the top of the page. And it is golden and it has written in it COVID-19 updates. If you will click on the COVID-19 alerts and status updates. Once you get to our COVID-19 dashboard, there are several features that will help you know more information about COVID-19 and COVID-19 testing and cases in our school district. The first you see is our status as of November 2nd. You can click on these links to current school risk status for the city of San Antonio. You can click here for all Southside ISD COVID notifications. If I click here, you can see there are copies of each letter that was sent home for any type of notification that happened at any of our campuses. These letters were sent home to families where a student may have been in close contact to a member of our faculty, staff, or student population who tested positively for COVID-19. These letters are only sent out when we have a positive confirmed case of COVID-19. We are not able to let any parents or faculty or students know the name of the person that they may have come in contact with because it's very important for us to keep everyone's personal identification information safe and secure. As you can see, there are district-wide letters and there may be letters for each of the campuses and you're welcome to look at these and you can see the date that it was sent and it was only sent home to families that a student may have come into close contact with someone who had a positive COVID-19 test. I'm going to go back to the Southside ISD homepage or back to the COVID-19 page just by clicking on my back button on my browser and there's other information on this page as well. As you scroll down, here is the dashboard that shows the number of confirmed cases, the number, the cumulative number of cases for both staff and students, and here's the percent of cases that have been sent home within the last 14 days. There's also information about remote learning and our safely reopening plan, our distance learning for students plan, where you can get tech support, and um, our other information that is available to help all of us deal with the COVID-19 situation in our school district. At the end, there are frequently asked questions documents, district news surrounded COVID-19, and community resources. We hope to be as transparent as possible, and we want you to continue looking at our COVID-19 page to get regular updates. Now we're going to move on to our next segment where our lead nurse, Desiree, is going to talk to us about the particular steps that are followed if a student is at school with symptoms of COVID-19. 
Thank you, Desiree. Good evening. My name is Desiree Fernandez, and I'm the school nurse here at Southside High School. I am also the lead nurse for Southside ISD, and I'm here to present to you our Southside ISD family and community update on COVID-19. Southside ISD's COVID-19 safety plan takes the safety and stu of students and staff very seriously. We work hard to provide a safe environment for learning, and we need a strong partnership between parents and guardians in order for all of us to be successful. Our goal is always to educate our cardinals in the safest way possible. And as, uh, what we do to start off with that is to make sure that all students and staff uh, wear their masks all day from the time they get here to the time that they leave. And we encourage uh, face shields to be used during the school day as well to protect the eyes. Uh, physical distancing of six feet or more and washing hands frequently are also best practices in order to keep safe here at the school and also in your homes. Um, we are also advising that anyone who is sick to please stay home. And if a student becomes sick at school, they will be sent home immediately. Southside ISD's COVID-19 safety plan follows the guidelines of the CDC, TEA, and San Antonio Metro Health Department when making decisions related to COVID-19. The basic guidelines we follow are the same in all school districts in, in and around Texas. Um, we keep everything basic, but also districts uh, in communities that have more spread are allowed to be a little bit more strict with their guidelines, but we follow the basic guidelines from all of those agencies. As positive case numbers increase, especially in our area here, it is important to understand that the guidelines can change at any time. And parents and guardians must be ready to follow changes in any operating procedures as they happen in our district. Our response to COVID-19 uh, positive cases in the community and in our schools relies upon parents and guardians uh, providing and sharing information as quickly as they can. As they receive it, they need to be sharing it with the school nurses here on campus so that we can take care of the entire community as soon as possible. Uh, a delay in receiving any information has the potential to cause entire classrooms and or departments to be temporarily closed. Information shared by parents and guardians is always considered confidential. Now, what do we do with uh, a student who is sick and in school with COVID-19 and or flu-like symptoms? And first of all, we're hoping that parents and guardians do keep children who are sick um, safely at home. But in the event that students are sick at school, teachers will identify students either by how they look or what their complaints are, and they will notify the school nurses. Um, school nurses will escort our students who are complaining of illness or, or who are sick into what we are calling our care rooms, which are isolation rooms. These are classrooms where the students are kept safe and are kept until parents or guardians can pick them up. The nurses will assess the students for temperature, check their vital signs, check and uh, document all symptoms and make recommendations to parents as to uh, where they should be taking their students for further care. Uh, Southside ISD school nurses do send students home who are sick with one or more symptom that may or may not be COVID related. So um, we take this very seriously when students present with symptoms that are suspicious, they do get sent home. Uh, symptomatic students, students with any type of symptoms are sent home to virtual learning for 10 days. Uh, this is considered a, a protocol per the uh, Metro Health Department. So parents can take students to receive doctor's do diagnosis and or COVID testing. Um, but if they decide to just keep them home, they will be out for 10 days. There is also new COVID PCR, which is the gold standard of testing, which is being done Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m down at our local La Mission Clinic, that's um, down to 281 going towards 1604. Uh, they are doing this testing free of charge to anyone who can do a walk-in or an online scheduling. And um, the website is www.curative.com. Now, what do we do with a student who was sick in school? They had been in attendance and in-person learning and then tests positive for COVID-19. Each decision is going to be made with the guidance of the San Antonio Metro Health Department. Um, so it is possible that each scenario is going to have a different outcome depending on uh, a variety of different factors. So not every situation will look like the other situation. So we're asking parents and guardians to be please be patient with us and understand that we respond to each unique situation with the unique outcomes that need to be done for the best outcomes for our entire community. 
Um, and as usual, um, as always, confidentiality is strictly maintained by the school. Uh, it, this is a small community, so if information or word gets around, you can please trust that it's not coming from the school. It's not coming from the school nurses. In-person learners who test positive for COVID will be switched to virtual learning for 10 days while recovering. Uh, they are asked to log into their virtual classrooms every day as long as they're feeling well enough to do that uh, so that their attendance will not be um, counted negatively. Parents and guardians will be advised by the health department, clinics, or uh, wherever they found their testing to keep their child isolated for 10 days at home. If your child is identified as a close contact or somebody that was in contact with a positive person, um, you will be notified by the school when we identify them in the classroom and or bus. Students who are close contact, those are who within six feet for 15 minutes or longer in one day uh, of a positive COVID person will switch to virtual learning for 14 days. Uh, they can log in and uh, count their attendance that way and maintain their, their learning that way. The clinic or health department will advise parents on quarantine cases um, at home. And you are uh, advised to contact your school nurse if you have any questions. Letters will be sent out only if there is a confirmed COVID-19 case on school property. Um, letters that have been sent out in previous cases, in previous scenarios, are available for you to look at at our website, southsideisd.org. You can click on the yellow bar at the top of the page to get the latest uh, information regarding COVID-19 in our district. COVID-19 uh, checklist for parents. We do have a need for parents to partner with the schools in order to best serve the students and staff in our um, district. So as part of the team, parents have responsibilities as well. Uh, parents who send their children to school for in-person learning are accepting of a certain level of risk when you send your child out uh, and you agree to the following. Number one is to keep your sick children at home. If your child looks like they're sick, if they have symptoms that are not normal for them, or if they're complaining of not feeling well, please keep your children at home. We are finding that simple symptoms, allergies, sniffles, runny nose, mild sore throat, and not necessarily fever can often be the first sign of COVID. Please notify the school nurse if you or your family, uh, family member or family members test positive for COVID. All information is kept confidential and please have your child wear a clean and well-fitting mask. We have masks available here at the schools. If your child's masks are damaged or dirty, or if they are ill-fitting, either too small or too big. If you can, please purchase multiple masks, at least two, and you can wash and dry in between usage to make sure your child has a clean mask every single day. Please, parents and guardians, keep your phone numbers and your emergency pickup lists updated. Uh, if the nurse calls, about a sick child, this child needs to be picked up immediately. If we have an emergency involving your child at school, we need to be able to contact somebody immediately. So keep those phone numbers and emergency pickup lists updated. Uh, please keep your child's vaccines updated. Uh, we do not need to have an epidemic of measles and or chicken pox in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, doctor's offices are very safe now as long as everybody makes an appointment, wears their masks and does social distancing. Uh, doctor's offices are open for exams, well child exams, and vaccine administrations. It is important that all children of school age are keeping up with their vaccines because their siblings, uh, their young cousins who are less than a year old, are not protected from these diseases and can easily catch and become very sick from measles and or chicken pox. So please keep your children's vaccines updated and make those appointments immediately. As rates of COVID and flu-like illnesses increase, especially in our area, please consider avoiding gatherings of people who do not live within your household. If you do gather, limit the size, wear your masks, do your distancing to be the safest that you can be. As part of our team, students are uh, an, uh, an important part of that. Uh, we need to have students follow the guidelines in order to keep themselves, their friends, and their families and teachers safe. Uh, students who are in-person learners have the following responsibilities, which is to wear their mask correctly. Here at the high school, we are con constantly uh, advising and reminding students to pull their masks up above their nose, um, to not pull them down to talk or cough or sneeze, to keep their masks up from the time they get here to school to the time that they leave, taking them off only for lunch. Um, 
it, let your teacher know, students, if your mask doesn't fit right, if it's dirty, if it's wet, if it's damaged, and we will get you a mask to switch into for the day. Watch your distance, students. Students are very social here at school. They see their friends and they want to be with their friends. So we are asking, please, parents, to teach your children what six feet looks like, mark it out on the floor, and let them learn how to distance themselves from other people to be safe. Students need to let teachers and or staff and or parents know when they don't feel well, when they're feeling, feeling sick so that they can stay home. And as always, students can ask for help from anyone as they need it. This and all information regarding any type of health services, um, any type of health conditions, forms needed or other information can be found in the health services de uh, departments tab and the departments link for our home page, southsideisd.org. If you have any questions, please Look on the page to find out the name of your uh, school nurse, contact information, or you can contact me at any time with any questions. Thank you so much and have a great day. Be safe. Now we are going to do our last part of this Facebook live event, and we're going to watch a video about our CTE automotive program. It really gives our students an opportunity to look at a career ready slash college ready program where they can exit high school ready to go to work or exit high school with those sharpened skills in automotive where they may want to look at mechanical engineering, automotive engineering, or other college career fields. There's the boot. Ten. And there's the spring. Hi, I'm John Davis. That slides on and then start the uh, faster. We have an ASE certified MLR training program. That's maintenance and light repair. We instruct the basic maintenance for vehicle service initially, and then we go into greater depth in the vehicle systems. When we first start, the student learns personal and shop safety. It's critical to uh, know how to behave and how to operate safely in the automotive environment. We have student certifications in ASE, and those certifications will uh, get you into the workplace and get you established uh, on a path for career readiness uh, for all eight ASE certifications. What it does is it gives them the advantage of leaving high school to be career ready to move right into a dealership if that's what they want to do or into a smaller operation or for vehicle service. It doesn't necessarily have to be a major dealer. It could be a privately owned uh, service as well, but the student will be ready to step into the maintenance field to provide basic automotive service. What we do is we uh, provide a service to our students, our faculty, staff, and administrators. We'll take their vehicles in and we run them through the shop just as if we were a service center, a commercial service center, and we operate the shop just like a business. What we do is we look at the automotive industry. We look at the history of the automotive industry. We look at the current technology. We look at the uh, tooling. We look at the diagnostics and then how we apply service. It is a career path that is not meant for everyone. You have to have some uh, interest in this area. So mechanical abilities are a plus, but not necessarily mandatory because not everyone wants to turn wrenches. Some people want to go into other aspects. The career path for automotive is very wide. We're, we have service, we have sales, parts, and certainly you can go on to a higher uh, educational level and uh, work towards engineering. You could be an automotive engineer. Well, there's no requirements in the middle school, but once you come to the high school, if you want to be in the automotive program and you're coming in as a freshman, we'd like to have you start out with auto basics. And what that does is it prepares you with all of the, uh, the things that, that would demonstrate your aptitude. So we do measurements, we do tools, we look at the body of the vehicle, we look at the frame. What components make up body and frame? What are the eight subsystems in the automotive uh, application? So uh, we really bring them in from a very uh, basic, fundamental level and bring them right up to the MLR, maintenance and light repair, service-based service.
Thank you for being with us this afternoon, and we hope you always feel free to reach out and contact our offices or our school district with questions and concerns that you may have. Have a good evening.